Okay, the next equations that we're going to talk about in this section have to deal with doing some kind of factoring. So these are ones where we have more than one trig function and these are going to involve either putting in some kind of an identity to solve it or doing some kind of factoring technique. So for this one, cosine squared minus cosine, what we notice here is there's a common factor of cosine that we can pull out. So that's the first thing you want to do is factor out a cosine. Because I don't have three terms, it's not going to be the two sets of parentheses like you would think. Normally it would just be for the one like this, you're just going to have one term on the outside. So I'm just going to pull out the cosine x and I'm only going to have one parenthesis here on this one. Now cosine from that, I get cosine there in the middle, inside, and then I have a minus one. You can always tell if you did factoring correct by multiplying back through again. You get cosine squared minus cosine. Uh, that and that would be your answer there. So what you need to do now is set both of these individually equal to zero. You get cosine x equals zero and cosine x minus one uh, equals zero and you're going to solve for both of those individually. So co that one's already solved already. Then we're going to solve this one. Cosine x equals one. So now I have both of these. So what you're going to do is on a unit circle uh, you want to look at these points on the unit circle here, the place where cosine equals zero and where cosine equals one. Well, here's two spots on the unit circle where cosine is going to equal zero because that's where the x value is zero. Cosine uh, is always the x value. So that's these two points uh, right here. Where cosine equals one, that's going to be this point uh, right here. So we're going to indicate our answer. So first of all, where cosine equals zero, we're going to indicate these two values. Now, for the unit circle, this is pi over two, and down here would be three pi over two. So my answers for x would be pi over two and three pi over two. But also, it's going to be where uh, cosine equals one. That's going to be only this spot here. That's where the x value is one. Because remember, the coordinates on here, this is one, zero, zero, one, negative one, zero, and down here would be zero, negative one. So that's why I chose these two points because both of these have an x value of zero and that answered the first part of the question there. And then the other ones, I have cosine equals one, that's this part right here, not going to be this one over there. So this one, uh, that's going to be at zero and also two pi, however we notice here that two pi is not included on our interval, so that means that the other answer is just going to be uh, zero. So these would be the three uh, answers on this. If you put all any of these three answers in and test it, you should always end up with a zero. Okay, for this problem, it's another one we have to do factoring, but what makes this different about the previous problem is now we have three terms instead of two. So this is not going to be one where you want to just pull something out because you're not going to be able to pull any cosine out of the one here. So that means that we have to do factoring like this where we actually have uh, two sets of parentheses. So let's do this one uh, factoring kind of by, I'm going to do this one by trial and error. So first of all, the cosine, I want to get two cosines squared. Now the only way that I can do that is if I multiply two cosine times cosine. There's really no other way of writing that. That would get me the two cosines squared. On the end, I have a one, so I'll put ones in uh, for both of those. That's the only factors of one is going to be that. Now I just have to make sure I have my signs correct. I know one's going to be positive, one's negative because of the sign on the end here. Just got to find out what that combination is. I want the middle term to be positive, which means I want this to be a positive two when I multiply it, and then this is going to be a negative cosine, so I'll get two cosine minus cosine will give you the cosine there in the middle. So now this is correctly factored. We can always multiply it back through to make sure we did it correctly, and we did in this case. Each one, now that's set equal to zero, we're going to make two separate equations. So two cosine x minus one equals zero, and cosine x plus one uh, equals zero, setting them both equal to zero individually. We're going to solve each one of those. For this one, we, if we solve that, for, solve for cosine, treat that as a variable, we're going to get cosine x equals one half. Add the one, divide by two. This one, we get cosine x equals negative one. Okay, so now we have to use our reference angles. Let's look at this one first. Cosine x is one half. We're going to use our table here. If we go down cosine until we reach one half, that gives us a reference angle of pi over 3. We're going to use radians because that's the interval that, that we're working with here. So I know that right here, uh, this is going to be pi over 3, and then I know that this x value is going to match the x value down below there, so I can draw this in, pi over 3 
as well down below here. Now when I write my answer for this, I know first of all that one of my answers is going to have to be pi over 3. I got that directly off of the table because that gives us a positive value of 1 half. Okay, then next I want to find out what this angle is. Now if this is 2 pi all the way over to here, I'm going back an amount of pi over 3. So from here I take 2 pi minus pi over 3. That's going to give us 5 pi over 3. So that would be the second answer on that one. Now I'm done with the first equation, but now I have to solve for the second equation now, cosine x equals negative 1. That's going to be this spot on the unit circle right here because that's where the x value is equal to negative 1. So I look on the unit circle, that's the only place where the x value is equal to negative 1. The rest of them, we looked at that in the previous example. Uh, these, the x value is 0, and here the x value would be positive 1. So this angle right here, that would be at 180 degrees or pi. So that would be my last solution. So for this particular problem, I have three solutions. And if I were to plug any of these answers back into the original equation, I should get zero as the answer.